Eye Health too, visiting with Nina Dockery. Nina is our enzyme expert. And one of the things I'd like to ask you, Nina, is what is the difference between digestive enzymes and systemic enzymes? Well, the basic difference is that when we're talking about digestive enzymes, we are talking about enzymes that impact, somehow impact digestion, okay. the digestive process. When we're talking about systemic enzymes, we are looking at enzymes that somehow impact processes that are going on outside the digestive system. And in order to do that, the problem with, in order to do that, is they have to be able to survive the gastric environment. The stomach. The stomach. And it, it's, there's been a lot of, of discussion of this and, and, and some perhaps misunderstanding as to the way that these enzymes can survive that. We know that animal enzymes, for the most part, mm -hmm. are active only in an alkaline region, and they are, they are basically destroyed in a low um, acid or a low pH region or the acidity of the stomach, and therefore those products are typically enteric coated. They're coated with something so they can survive. But unlike those, microbial and plant enzymes do have the ability to survive a, a low pH region. So there has been research done that shows that they can survive through the stomach and be um, active in the intestinal region after passing through the low pH of the gastric region. You can take them while you're eating and because they have the ability, they are active in a region that goes down to a pH of two or three, okay. that they can survive that and be active in that region. Yes, they do survive and then they can also survive in the intestine and be active there. Their pH range for activity is very broad. They have a pH range, many of them, from around three to even upwards of seven, eight, nine. So they have a very broad range for activity. So they do work throughout that whole system. And then the difference between the digestive enzymes and the systemic enzymes then would be? The, the place where they work, the action that they have for digestive enzymes being in the digestive tract, for the, in, for the systemic enzymes being outside the process of digestion. And also the other difference is would be the time that you take them. For digestive enzymes, you want to take them in conjunction with a meal. For systemic enzymes, in order to avoid all um, uh, contribution that they would have to the digestive process, you want to take them between meals. Oh. So you don't want to take them while you're eating a meal or they would function as digestive enzymes and there would be some, some problems or you wouldn't get the, the full activity mm -hmm. that you would want and need for a systemic application. So that's the two basic, basic um, differences would be where their intent is for functioning and also the time in which they would be taken. Systemic enzymes are taken in order to impact within the, the circulation, usually to mediate an inflammatory condition, either vascularly in the blood or extravascularly in the tissue outside of the bloodstream. So we have, we have research, some of the preliminary research was done on bromelain, which is a plant enzyme, and more recently, some work done on, with microbial enzymes, particularly fungal enzymes, that show that they have the ability to impact the inflammatory process in circulation, either in the vascular system by, by helping to break down fibrin, mm -hmm. uh, which is the substance, the protein that actually forms clots within the bloodstream, or extravascularly outside where tissue inflammation occurs as a result of soft tissue injury or trauma to the system. Now how that process occurs, we really don't know. And there has been a lot of discussion recently, I know it, and it's always been that way, that large proteins such as, as enzymes would not pass through the in, intestinal wall intact mm -hmm. in order to function in the bloodstream. And, you know, logistically, that seems that that would be true. We know that something is happening. What research is trying to show right now is 
do they pass intact through the intestinal wall and function as enzymes in the system or do they somehow interact with other substances on the outside of the intestinal wall, the bloodstream side of the intestinal wall, that then impact the inflammatory processes within the system. So these are the questions and the discussions that go on. Right. These are the questions and the research that is going on right now on exactly how they function. Most of these are proteases. Mm -hmm. And so they are they function to break down certain proteins like fibrin okay. or um, to mediate pro-inflammatory substances such as cytokines, TNF-alpha, uh, for instance, is one of the ones that has been studied. And they see that they are impacting those substances in circulation. We're just really not sure at this point how they do it. Nina, could you give us an example of a systemic enzyme? Yes. Most of the products that are sold for systemic uses are proteases. They break down protein. And traditionally, the first products were derived from animal sources, just like mm -hmm. the first digestives were de derived from animal sources. And they are enteric coated, so they will survive the action of the, um, of the stomach region, even though they are taken on an empty stomach. And then there are some that are derived from plant sources, particularly bromelain and papain, have been studied for many years. And these are both proteolytic enzymes as well. More recently, the microbials have been studied more because they have a much broader range of activity. They don't have to be enteric coated. Again, they are, they are proteases and um, usually fungals. We are now um, actually studying those and how they are functioning in systemic circulation. So you're still steeped in research? Oh yes, yes, very, very much so. Thank you, Nina. Thank you.